one game at a time, go out there, play as hard as we can. On a night in early March, after a Rockets win, Senator Dwight Howard addresses the media. What was the key to the comeback after the Pelicans took the lead late in the game? Our defense. Our defense is great. But before he leaves, Howard has one last commitment. A unique training session with Rockets physical therapist Jason Biles. It's part of a routine designed to keep Howard on the court and off the injury report. It's good because when I'm doing the exercise, you know, it takes a lot of the pressure off my joints. So I'm getting the, the same workout in, but the load is not as heavy on my knees, which is very important, especially when you get up in age. Last season, Howard missed 41 games many as the result of a cartilage injury in his right knee. I had some stuff in my knee and it just kept bothering me. And every time I went to jump and move, I was like, man, I just feel this pain in my knee. Howard really limp because he comes up the floor. Well, I'm always jumping, you know, always in the air, always coming down and putting a lot of force, you know, on my feet and my knees and my back. Blocked by Howard, rejected out of bounds. We realized that we needed to have a plan for Dwight Dr. Walt Lowe, head team physician of the Houston Rockets and the Houston Texans, sees cartilage injuries as particularly threatening for NBA players. These guys play 82 real games a year. The average guy runs about five miles every basketball game on a fairly hard surface. Lowe says not all injuries require surgery, including Howard's but there are concerns about lingering weakness of the muscles responsible for protecting the knee. They load their knees, they load their spines, they load their body in, in just an exponential way compared to a lot of the other sports. And so that's where the BFR has come in to use with Dwight. BFR, or blood flow restriction training, utilizes a specialized tourniquet cuff wrapped around the upper portion of the arm or leg. The cuff is inflated to a pressure that reduces blood flowing into the limb by approximately 80% and restricts all of the blood from flowing out. So his max pressure is 202. We take 80% and that's how this 161 number comes up. So that's the, the number, the pressure that we'll exercise at. Are you getting the burn? I am feeling the burn. <laughs> yes, I am. And it only gets worse because we have two more sets of 15 after this. Yeah, after this, I'm... I want to go to sleep. <laughs> oh, boy. The decreased blood flow results in less oxygen to the limb. Exercising the muscles in this low oxygen state allows the athlete to use very light resistance, yet achieve strength gains similar to exercising under heavy loads or high intensity. You really can't feel your legs this part. Scientists have been studying blood flow restriction and its effect on muscle for years. The first set's usually fairly easy because you still have oxygen in the muscle. Johnny Owens, the physical therapist who introduced BFR training to the Rockets, first began using it in 2012 as a means of helping wounded soldiers regain their strength. Right off the bat, we could see, man, this is really helping this amputee or this limb salvage guy. But there's another guy over here on this other table who just had an ACL repair. He's probably a great candidate, but if you ask Dwight to go lift a whole bunch of weight in the squat rack or leg press, that might severely take the tread off the tire, basically. So he can use this as a way to maintain the strength and hypertrophy with a very light weight, just apply a, this tourniquet system to it. Ooh. Ooh. But with us basketball players, when we're you know, lifting weights and, you know, if you want to look good and have those beach muscles, then you just do the bench press, the normal bench press, or you do squats. But if you want to make sure during the fourth quarter when those big muscles are tired, you have something to hold them together, those are just the little things that make a big difference. Some people watching you doing that training might say, he's got to be nervous because you're cutting off the blood flow to the limb while you're exercising. If something were to go wrong, it could be career threatening. That is true. How do you respond? Uh, well, you have to try it before you can just, you know, knock it off and say it doesn't work. Uh, but I understand there's always fear coming in, but if you want great results, if you want to get somewhere in life, no matter if it's training, basketball, any sport, or just to be successful, 
you have to get over the fear. Both Lowe and Owens say supervised clinical use of BFR training is safe based on the history of tourniquet use in medicine. We put a tourniquet up around the leg for two hours for big surgeries, and this is up for five minutes at a time. The use of tourniquets and restricting blood flow in extremities, we've done that forever. Tourniquets are medical devices. They're FDA regulated. They need to have cuffs that are wider so they don't put too much pressure on the limb. The biggest concern our researchers said that we need to watch out for was nerve damage. And they told us that using thinner cuffs can, can cause nerves to be damaged. How worried are you that athletes are going to learn about this and potentially say, I can go in the gym and wrap a band around, like weightlifting band, and I can essentially recreate this. We are worried, and we already have questions from athletes. Everyone's pressure needed to make the blood stop in their limb is different. So it's based on your blood pressure, it's based on the size of your limb, how much muscle you have, how wide the tourniquet cuff is, where the tourniquet cuff is. So all those type of safety features, I think, need to be applied clinically. What is it, 32? 42. Yeah. While the early results are encouraging, there is no long-term data available related to BFR training. Studies take a really long time, especially large good trials, and, and those are ongoing. As for Howard, his results have been enough to convince him to continue with BFR training. Uh, I would say if I wasn't doing the BFR uh, training and treatment, uh, I would probably miss a couple games. I want to play basketball as long as I can, and be as healthy as I can, and even, you know, post-career, you know, being able to, to walk and do all the things that I'm doing now, I want to be able to do that.